हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द लिमिट ऑफ एसेंट्रिसिटी फॉर रेक्टेंगुलर सेक्शन दिस इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड मिडिल वन थर्ड रूल व्हाई वी आर कॉलिंग दिस मिडिल वन थर्ड रूल एंड व्हाट इज मेंट बाय लिमिट ऑफ एसेंट्रिसिटी एंड वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट रेक्टेंगुलर सेक्शन यू नो दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड दैट कंप्रेसिव मेंबर्स लाइक कॉलम्स like concrete structures are very good strength in compression but they have very poor strength in tension so tension should be avoided no tensile stress should be developed in the compressive members like concrete and columns so to avoid that there is some limit and we are, we are providing the eccentricity and due to eccentricity of the uh, force it is not axial it is eccentric to the axis of the shaft so due to uh, eccentricity of the column what is happening there there is bending moment developed and that bending moment is causing the bending stresses and in bending stresses there are both stresses compressive and tensile and the sum of the direct stress and bending stress gives the resultant stress right and that resultant stress should be either should have uh, zero tension or there should be compressive stress developed as the th third case we have described there in the previous lecture right so uh, we want that there should not be any tension in the material for that there is a limit of eccentricity the e value eccentricity of the load there is a limit to that if that limit is crossed then there will be tension in the material and within that limit or within that area particular area if we are applying the load there will be no tension in the material so we want to discuss that thing here so suppose we have a column like this we i am taking the cross section of only of that column right so say okay then i am using the column itself like this and this is the axis of that column this is our column suppose this is a short column it is not long column don't think that this is a long column just for the sake of sh showing i am making it longer otherwise this is a short column long column will be studied in euler theory of column separately this is the load applied and this is the eccentricity eccentricity now we want to see the cross section of this beam from the top side this is the uh, front view from top view how it seems suppose this is our top view this is the top view like this and from top what we can see is we can see here the length the width and depth two dimensions are there like suppose this uh, this is one dimension this is the cross section area from uh, seeing from the top and suppose this is the load applied p from top we can see this is a dot in, in the inside the board this is a load applied and this is the eccentricity e right and uh, this is suppose dimension d and this dimension is suppose b like this right so so there will be loading p so it can be combined into a two types of load uh, one is direct load and another is a bending moment m which is equal to pe right so there are two types of load one is p and another is bending moment that is pe right and due to this load there is stresses will be developed that is bending stress and direct stress and we want that we want that at this point because stresses will be developed uh, bending stresses can develop at this point at this point there should be no stress developed in this material right so the direct load we we already discussed that direct load if e equal to or greater than uh, bending stresses then there is no uh, tensile stress developed in the material so if bending stress you know that if the direct stress is greater than or equal to bending stress 
if this condition prevails then there is no compressive stress no no sorry tensile stress no tensile stress developed in the material check the previous lecture that sigma d if greater than or equal to sigma b then there is no tensile stress developed in the material right and suppose and what are the direct load what is direct load that is p by a and what is bending load bending stress that is what is bending stress that is m by uh, m by i multiplied by y and m is pe so pe by i multiplied by y and from here p to p cancel and we will get e should be less than equal to a centricity should be less than equal to uh, i by y divided by i by y p to p cancel this is i by y divided by a so i by y divided by a right and what is i by y this is uh, section modulus check sec section modulus uh, chapter that is so e should be less than equal to z upon a section modulus upon a so this is a condition this is a condition for no tensile stress in a compression member compression member this is a compression member in which we want only compressive stresses and if we want that there is no there should not be any tensile stress then the eccentricity should be less than equal to z upon e z upon a uh, section modulus upon the area of cross section of this column and what is section modulus of the uh, column of a rectangular cross section that is bd square by 6 b and d will be taken this should be taken right so bd square b this is b d square upon 6 so this should be less than equal to b d square upon 6 multiplied by area that is b d b d so this shows that e should be less than equal to from here you will get this is d by 6 d by 6 so a centricity should be less than d by 6 so this should be this value this should value should not be greater than d by 6 on one side on one side and similarly similarly if we apply the load on this side then then also it should not be more than d by 6 on this side and d by 6 plus d by 6 it will become d by 3 that's why we are telling this middle one third rule that in one third part of eccentricity of this part there will be no any compressive stress so here this is the neutral axis d by 6 from here center d by 6 from this center so this is the limit of eccentricity d by 6 d by 6 similarly if we see on this side b side there should also be this value and this value of the limit of eccentricity so that there should not be any tensile stress develop so here also here also you will get the same condition that if we apply the load here or here there should not be any tensile stress developed b by 6 b by 6 means b by 3 so this is d by 3 d by 3 part and here if we apply load p and if we apply load p here then also we are getting the limit of eccentricity as d b by 6 and b by 6 so total here it will become b by 3 so this will this will a give an area this will give an area in which if we are applying any load 
the body will remain still in compression and there will be no any tension in this shaded part. So in this shaded part suppose A, B, C, D in shaded part A, B, C, D there will not be any tension in the material. So in this shaded part there is no any tension in the material and this is this shaded part is d by 3 in at the from the at the center in d side on d side if this side is d if this side is d and b by 3 in this part uh, from the center from the center total uh, width is b by 3 in the length of b if this length is b so this is d by 3 and b by 3 this area is an area where our member is safe and only compressive stresses are there and this is called kern one word used for this is kern k e r n kern so kern is that part where there is if we applying eccentricity to the loading there is no tension in the material and material is safe because only compressive stresses are there within this part of the kern